traditional billing service. That mean, meaning not us. Okay. So what happens is a claim is created, which is very complicated. There's lots of boxes, there's codes, there's modifiers, whatever, right? So you're the doctor, you have some system, maybe it's a travel card that you check off a box, it's some other system that, I don't know how, how they do it in other systems. It creates what's called a super bill. Somebody in your office takes that super bill and either creates a claim and then sends it to the billing company, not the insurance company, to the billing company, or they send the super bill, which is basically a, a list of the stuff you did, to the billing company, at which point the billing company takes that claim or, or uh, super bill and generates a claim, and then hopefully they submit it. So first of all, the submission process from your office to the billing service is by fax, by email, by mail. How else are you gonna get it there? Are there any problems with any of those th three modes of getting a claim manually to a billing service. Yeah. You see where problems can happen. Okay. So first of all, that's problem number one. <laughs> lots of manual steps by people creating the super bill, lots of manual steps and people in between you after it's created and the billing service itself, and then the billing service has to actually generate this claim before they submit it. Submission process number two hopefully is electronic at this point, but some billing services, believe it or not, are still doing paper. Then at the end of the month, they send you, they have a, um, I'm sorry, they have a, um, a biller or billers that sit in front of their system and they go through lots of reports, they're called aging reports, and they look for claims. Now, how many thousands of combinations did we talk about? Denials, underpayments, or this person, you're depending on knowing all those combinations. There's underpayments, there's line item denials, there's old claims, there's problems with diagnosis codes, modifiers, diagnosis linking, there's compliance issues potentially, and all, and all of those have variations for each payer. And this one biller is supposed to go through all the aging reports and find every single claim every single time to make sure you get paid every dollar you're supposed to get paid. After that, they create a report, it's called your aging reports, and they send it to your office which I'll tell you the billing report I used to get was at least this thick every month, at least. What do you think I did with it? When are you going to actually look at that? <laughs> <laughs> when do you have the time to look at that? You don't have the time to look at that. Even if you did have time, first of all, that's your first problem, you have time to look at it. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> you don't know what you're looking at. It's Greek. You're not a biller. You were never trained on that. You're never going to be trained on that. You don't want to get trained on that. You have plenty of other things to put into your head. Oops. Okay. So that's a simplified version with some of the problems. Let's talk about the problems. Number one thing you want with your billing service is you want trust and you want to work like a team together to beat the insurance companies. It's not me versus you. It's not, you know, uh, I generate some claims, I mail them to you, and I'm not paid for them. Uh, whatever happened to Mary's claims? Uh, did you get that email? Did you get that fax? I called you, you never returned my call. And that happens with billing services, because I did that. We have to eliminate that. You want to feel like we're a team, and when we get on a phone call, it's focused. We talk about something specific on what area we need to improve so that you get paid, we get paid faster. Because we get paid a percentage, right? right. So if you want to, um, the, again, the problems with this process where you have your traditional billing service. It's very error prone. Claims creation is dependent on multiple people and they all get multiple, we call it multiple touches, right? There's multiple people touching this claim from the time you adjust the patient to the time a claim gets actually to the insurance company. There's multiple people in the way of that claim. Submission errors are not identified until after the submission to the insurance company. So you make two errors on, on a claim form or your billing company makes two errors. Again, you don't find out about them all at once. It comes back, it comes back. So we need to find those up front. We don't need to wait forever to find those things out. <clears throat> Sorry, one more thing. Identification of the claims that actually need follow-up is dependent on a human who can't possibly remember all the reasons why a claim needs to be followed up on. It's impossible to do. No person is smart enough to memorize all those permutations. It lacks transparency. So you submit um, the submission process 
one and two, there's no confirmations to you, the doctor, that your claim actually got through from your office. So you always have that guessing game or you have that, I never got paid on that patient, I have to call the billing company, I have to call the billing service. It doesn't work. You're never gonna do it and you're just gonna let those, let those claims go. The doctor, here's a, here's a big one we're gonna talk about. When you have this type of process, which is very manual, not using technology, especially not web-based technology, you, the process itself is not transparent. You have no idea how many claims today for your office need to be followed up on. It's a simple question, actually. How many claims need to be followed up on today? Do you want to go into your, if you had a biller even in your own office, do you want to go into your billing office and say, okay, let's talk about some aging reports and let's talk about why claims are getting denied. No, I want to go into my billing office and say, how many claims need to be followed up on today? And she, he, or she, he or she says, 30, whatever it is. And then at the end of the day, I want to go back in there and say, did you follow up on 30 claims? And they say, yes or no. But at least we know. Do you want to know anything other than that? No. If you want to, you can, but you don't need to. So you don't know if the, the work is completed by the end of the day. You lack real-time reporting, so everything is retrospective. They send you a report a month after the work is done. <clears throat> you can't even, if you wanted to, if you had a suspicion that the billing service is not doing what they're supposed to, you can't go look at what they're doing. What, are you gonna go drive to your billing service? Go sit in their office and look at claims with them? There's no notes on the conversations they had. There's no documentation in the claim on every action that was taken on that claim, which we did. Quality. There's, this is um, kind of the follow-through process where there's one thing to say you actually did all the work. It's another thing to say you did it all well. So there's no quality control built into this process. There's no way to find changes by the insurance company. So do you guys, is that a static game or is the, game, the rules changing? All changing. They're changing constantly. It's a tactic, it's, a, it's the way they do things. They make it complex and ever-changing so that you are off guard, so that they can just delay a payment. I have stories about that you guys wouldn't believe. Um, so there's no way to measure the quality of the work after the work has already been completed. All right. So, instead of trust and teamwork, instead of us winning, as a billing service, you wind up pointing fingers and eventually you fire them, just so you know, and you wind up getting another billing company. <laughs> um, and usually the same thing happens again. They promise you the world and then a few months later you figure out they can't possibly do what they say. So again, it's error prone, there's lax, it lacks transparency, there's no way to measure quality, and you have no control. So if we want to get to trust and teamwork and fight the insurance companies together, uh, number one, we have to decrease the errors in an automated way. We have to increase transparency. You need to be able to, when you need to, only, be able to see anything you want to see at any given time from anywhere there's a connection to the internet. You need to increase the control over the process and it has, there has to be a quality assurance program built in, meaning that the quality of the work happening by the billers is continually monitored and improved over time. Because if you don't, the insurance company is changing the game. How do you know when they change the game unless you're measuring the output? Alright, so this is now uh, what we're doing with Genesis. Um, the provider, you guys, you're at the touch screen. When you hit the bill button, you wait for your builder, your somebody in your staff to generate a claim, to go into the system, to upload a batch to some clearinghouse, to do any of that stuff. What happens? You hit the bill button, what happens? Now? Submit a question. Now. This is now. It goes to you. Then the magic happens. Then the magic happens. <laughs> and then we're done. For the next person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. The claim is created in real time. Error warning. So you might have seen some red flag warnings. You forgot a modifier or whatever. Let's get that out of the way before you even hit the bill button, right? So that happens at the table. Um, cl compliant note, which we're going to teach as this training goes on. You're going to have a compliant note and signed note and generate the claim when you hit one button much better process. In that old process, did you even, was a note even in the equation in the old billing service option? No. You don't even have the note in the equation. Forget about doing the note or signing the note or, or, tra or tracking whether or not the note happened. So it's real-time claim submission. 
If you make an error, you forgot to put the birth date in or something like that, it kicks it right back to you. Let's not wait 60 days for the insurance company to tell us. Let's, there's plenty of, you have the rules built into the system. The system, the technology, the, the server looks at every claim you generated, puts it through a whole list of questions. That, a computer can do thousands, could have thousands of rules in it, right? 1.2 million. Excuse me, 1.2 million rules. <laughs> That's an order of magnitude, I believe. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. If the claim the claim is clean, it gets through the server straight to the insurance company. We get confirmation of the receipt of the claim to the clearinghouse and to the insurance company. That confirmation is stuck right in the claim. You can see it anytime, any anywhere from that day forward. So we know that was received. And if it's not received, we're on it. Like that. Okay? So this web-based artificial intelligence, you can call it the rules engine, uh, the 1.2 million rules that this thing looks at claims and that rules engine grows, those rules grow. <coughs> um, we went from, with this now process here, we went from a manual submission process with lots of people, lots of steps, to one step, straight through. Okay. Errors are sent back, compliant document, documentation is created at the time of service. We get three confirmations, accepted by the system, we have our own rules, accepted by the clearinghouse, accepted by the insurance company. Okay, so now you're the provider in this picture. The error claims, again, are coming back to you instantly, the ones that you need to fix before we even submit it through the foot insurance company. Also, we're also talking about profitability, right? We talked, we said we're more than just billing now. We're letting you know through a ticket if you have a note that's not signed or you check somebody in and you forgot to bill them, ticket right to you. So you're getting notified of where your, your process is breaking down. EOBs are now electronically and automatically posted into the system. We don't have billers, in most cases, sitting and posting charges into the system. It's automatically happening. Comes in as an electronic file, gets posted to the system. What happens next? Let me make sure I don't skip steps. Good. All right. Now, we don't have billers sitting in front of aging reports, trying to memorize millions or thousands of rules and find which claim needs to be followed up on. We already have the rules. The system finds the claim, okay? And this all happens instantly, as soon as, uh, as the claim is ready to be followed up on. Those underpaid, 30 days overdue, and all this, like the system knows, it pulls the claim, and it sticks it on what's called the workbench. Have you guys heard of the term workbench? Mm -hmm. Okay. A workbench is, if I'm a biller, I sit in front of my computer screen, it has a list of the claims I need to follow up on. If it has 10, I have 10 things on my workbench. So you're not going to six different clearinghouse websites no. to make sure that all of Dr. Dan's claims got paid? No, Jason, I'm not. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so my billers, our billers, are sitting in front of a workbench. If they need something, they send it to your workbench. So the claim is in basically one of a few places. It's at the insurance company. They have 30 days to waste time. If it's not there, it's on our workbench. If it's not there, it's on your workbench. And if it's not in any of those places, it's paid. It's always being worked by somebody. Or if it's not being worked, we also know that, right? So if you needed to correct something and you resubmit it, does it come to the biller? No, it goes right through to the insurance company. So anything that we do, we need to correct, we, we push through. So these billers sit in front of the workbench, and all they do is the work that they're assigned to do. And in that way, I know exactly, you know exactly how many claims for your practice are sitting on the workbench for us to follow up on. You can see that number. We know how many are for your practice, but across the hundreds of practices, I also know one number. I don't need hundreds of different numbers, metrics. I know one number of all the claims that need to be followed up on right now, today. Not tomorrow, that's a different number. But right now, how many are on the workbench? And at the end of the day, Guess what? I know if it got done. If it didn't get done, what do I have to do? Something different, right? Maybe I need more people. Maybe I need a better process. Something's happening. 
So that's where quality assurance comes in, which we'll talk about. So this is the workbench. So I thought these numbers would be larger. Oh, I did that. Okay. So this is your tasks, your practice. This is your billers that need to be done right now. And this is the number of stuff that has to happen. These numbers are across hundreds of practices. But it's now and in the future, the last number, right? Because a biller can take a claim, do something on it, and it needs follow-up, but it's really not today. They really need to do something on it tomorrow. And they don't want it sitting on their workbench, clogging up their screen, and so they don't know what they actually have to do right now. They want to reset it for a few days from now or whatever. So you need to know those three numbers. So when you know those three numbers, you know the total work outstanding, you know the work that you need to do, <coughs> you, need the to you, need, you know the total amount of work that needs to happen today across the whole process. What that does ultimately is give us transparency. Now you can drill into those numbers and look at claims and look at all the, you know, the accepted from the clearinghouse and all these rules that it went through and all that stuff if you wanted to go into that depth. But what this does is it gives you a number and it gives me a number that we can all agree on that this is what we're going to do today for you. And are you getting it done? Building precision. And it gives you transparency when you can drill into that and look deep down into that. That's called transparency. It gives us accountability to you. But it also gives you accountability to us. Because you have a workbench and I have a workbench. If my workbench is done and yours not, is not, you're accountable to me. Because how do I get paid? I'm getting, 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 getting paid. <laughs> so if I'm getting submitted and them paying us. Right, I get a percentage. Right? We get a percentage. So if you're not doing your work, look, you're accountable to us. You gotta do your work. Alright, but when we have transparency and we have accountability, then we can work as a team. Because if we're not getting paid, we're not getting paid. Okay? 